Okay guys, I'm going to show you today how to get Google SketchUp up and running and use it to create a file that can be used on a 3D printer. So the first step up is to actually download Google SketchUp. So you're going to open the web browser of your choice. Right now for me that's Chrome. Then in, in the Google you're going to search SketchUp. If you search SketchUp, oops, even if you don't spell it right, isn't Google wonderful? Okay, so SketchUp, here we go. So then you're going to click on the download SketchUp link. Now, you have three options here. You can, uh, you can say, I plan to use SketchUp for professional work, personal projects, educational use. They take you to slightly different link. The only one that it really isn't going to get you what you want is this uh, professional work because we don't really need SketchUp Pro for what we're doing. I I really I've used SketchUp Pro because I can get a free educational license and I don't see any major difference for our purposes. So I'm going to select personal projects, and you have to type in your email address. I'm going to use my general email address. You'll type in whichever one you want. And you can say what you want to do. If you want to be in urban planning, then you can you can select that. We're going to go down, and I'm just going to select other, because why the heck not? It's just for their purposes anyway. I'm currently downloading for Windows. You'd want to select Mac if you were downloading for Mac. Of course, you have to agree to this, and I always uncheck these. On. I don't really want to hit, have a bunch of emails from them. So then we download SketchUp Make. Select where you want to download it to. And click Save. Okay, now through the power of editing, it is magically downloaded. So you click on the download link. The downloaded link and you gotta allow it because you know windows and it's gonna extract the installer and then you go through all the install make sure you accept the terms even if you haven't read them default locations fine unless you want to mess with that and go through and install as you can tell, it's a pretty quick install. Okay, once that's done, you click Finish. Then, I'm going to go ahead and close out of Chrome. Then, it'll show up. It'll it'll automatically install these, these things on the desktop. Uh, I don't really want that, personally. You can leave them, but I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that stuff off of there. Then I like to use the uh, sidebar and and the search to open things, uh, mostly because I'm coming from a from a Mac, and so I'm used to just search and open. So I'm going to hit Windows S, and then I'm going to type S K E T, and then SketchUp. Bam. Okay. So when you first open SketchUp up. Uh, they're going to give you a 30-day trial of SketchUp Pro. Who really cares? Thanks for that uselessness. First thing you want to do is you want to choose which template you're going to use. You probably will only have to use this once if you're only going to use this for one thing. You scroll down and find what templates you want to use. They actually have a 3D printing template um, that gives you uh, kind of a box of the uh, MakerBot replicator build build platform i i don't like seeing that um it, it's annoying to me so i you can use that template if you prefer i prefer using the woodworking templates because they're real clean and simple there's no little men or little boxes you could of course delete those but anyway so we're going to select woodworking millimeters and i'm going to start using sketchup it's going to open up this instructor, but I'll be your instructor for the day. So we're going to close this instructor tab. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get set, SketchUp set 
to be able to export STL files. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to go oh, up here and find your extension warehouse, which is this little icon right here. And in the extension warehouse, you're going to search STL. STL enter. Okay. So you'll you'll look in there. The first one that comes up right now is this SimLab STL importer for SketchUp. Um, I've never used this extension. Sounds cool. I'll have to look at it at some point. I might be able to import them. But the SketchUp team actually makes a STL extension. So that's the one we want. So we're going to go to the SketchUp STL. We're going to click download. It's going to make you log in with your Google account. So you'll have to do that. If you don't have a Google account, now would be a good time to make one. And if you don't have a, already have a Google account, why not? Just saying. Okay. Let's sign in and accept. And then sometime tomorrow. And you see you show up, and then instead of download, it says install. So we click install. And make sure you accept the terms and conditions in use. You notice they don't say, I have read anymore. They just, a lot of them just say, accept it. Because you know you're going to just accept it anyway. Nobody reads that stuff. Okay. Let's see. I think that worked. Let's click on file and oh nope, it's not showing up. Now I may have to restart the thing. Let's try this process. Yay, okay. Click install and then yes, you do want to be able to access the file system because you want it to be able to save it out as an STL. That's basically what this is saying. Okay, we want to install this extension. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, of course, the extension has been installed. It's now available for use. Okay. Yay. Then you can exit out of this thing. So what that did was it added a button up here. So when you click on file, now instead of just, oops, instead of just export, you also have export STL. So let's go through the process of, of creating a little file. Okay. So I'm going to make like a little box that I could put something in. So in in Google, you have your different shapes in Google. In Google SketchUp, you have your different shapes you can do. I'm just going to do a rectangular box. Now, Google SketchUp is a little bit more finicky than some of the other programs because you don't dimension things after the fact. You dimension it as you go, which... If you're coming from another program like 123 Design or Inventor or something else, that can be a bit of a bit of a tricky mess to get get used to. So what I do when I teach my students how to create objects is I tell them to click, drag, and let go. And because if you go and click somewhere else, then often you'll end up with some wonky things happening. And it, it's hard to get back in and dimension that shape. Okay, so you're going to type in your dimension. So if I wanted to make a five centimeter uh, by five centimeter box on the external diameter, then I would type five cm comma five cm. You could also do 50 and leave off the units since we're in millimeters. Oh, it's tiny. Okay, so you're going to use your scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in. Okay, now you'll notice that this has no space. I can do it right now. It has no dimension. It has no volume. It's just sitting there. It has it has space, I guess, but no volume. So we have to use the extrusion tool to extrude it up. So we're going to take the push-pull tool. And we're going to click, drag, and let go, just like we did before. And then we're going to type 5 mm for millimeters. Because that's a nice little, little base for our box. Now, Google SketchUp does have an offset tool. So you click the offset tool if you want to make a wall. 
you can click the face you want to offset and see, you'll see that the tooltip gives us on edge so when you click on there it'll tell you and you don't even have to click anything after that you can do 5 mm enter and then you can use your push pull tool again and click drag and let go and you can do five centimeters and you get your little wall using your middle mouse button you can orbit around you can hold shift and your middle mouse button to pan around and then now you've got a little box and now to send that to something that your 3d printer can well that your cam software can use you use the button I showed you earlier you click file export STL okay now this is what's what's kind of neat is you could we could have actually designed this in inches and then tell it to export in a particular units now my printer my Ultimaker uses uh, millimeters and so you want to make sure you export the proper or unit uh, my printer also uses ASCII you can the other option is binary some printers or some cam softwares use one or the other uh, I believe that it's actually possible to use either or um, in this one uh, with my software but I know it works in ASCII so you hit S export and then S export it wherever you're gonna do it it is a good idea to name your file something useful right Okay, so I'm going to delete off everything but the s.stl and I'm going to name it box because, you know, why not? Save. Now, if I go to the desktop, there's my box. If I double click this and open it, oh, I have to tell it what program I want to use. I'm just going to use Notepad to open this. See, it tells you the stl file is just a bunch of, of little locations. This is how it's de this is how it's defined, okay. and that's really it to making Google SketchUp work to be able to export an STL.